Good evening.
West London in the late 1960s. We ran our own club in West London in a pub called the White Bear. And we had all the stars of the day coming to play. Bert Yance, John Renborn, Al Stewart, John Martin, Roy Harper. All of them came there and played. Mary Hopkin came in one night and sang for us. Sandy Denny sang. David Bowie even came along and sang for us. But my favourite singer was a person you probably won't even have heard of. His name was Dominic Behan. He was an Irish raconteur. He was a singer, songwriter. And he could hold a stage and an audience like nobody I've ever known. He could also drink beer like nobody I've ever known as well. <laughs> One night he took us up to the centre of London to visit the Irish pubs and we got absolutely, we call it in England, slaughtered. And we had to drive him back home. We left him on his doorstep, rang the bell and ran away like naughty schoolboys. And the next day I was walking down Hounslow High Street and I saw Dominic and his wife coming towards me. And I apologised, so I'm so sorry about last night. But Dominic was holding hands with his wife, Josephine. And he said, don't worry. He said, we've been married for 25 years and we're still very much in love. And I thought, what a wonderful thing to be able to say after 25 years of being married. So this song was written the very next day for Josephine Beer. It's called Josephine, for better or for worse.
songs were gentle love songs that we sang at the time. Some of them were written about what was happening in the world around us. And when the IRA started letting off bombs in central London, in towns in the north of England like Warrington, and there were shootings on the street and people being stabbed in the street, then we became very angry. And this song was the title track of our album, Grave New World. This is called New World.
first British band to be signed by A&M Records in Hollywood in Los Angeles. And they didn't know what to do with us, really. They said, you'd better make a single. So we had to find our own producer. And we found a guy called Gus Dudgeon. And as a result of Gus producing our first ever single, our first ever 45 record, Gus's manager took our little record to Elton John's manager and said you ought to consider Gus as the producer of the next Elton John album. And guess what? Gus got the job. And the album he produced first for Elton John was the one with your song on it that made Elton John a megastar all around the world. And the guy who did the arrangements, the orchestral arrangement on the record, was Tony Visconti. And Tony Visconti went on to produce David Bowie, Mark Bolan, T-Rex, The Moody Blues, The Stranglers, all those incredible names. So there we were in the studio with the two most significant producers of the 1970s. Sadly for us, our record was made in the late 1960s before anybody had heard of Elton John or David Bowie or Mark Bowen. But we continue to sing this song to this day. Because now that we have digital downloads, we are absolutely sure that maybe next week this record is going to reach number one. <laughs> this is Oh How She Changed. She leaned forward in the lamplight In her eyes it had She was promising the earth And yet somehow saying oh, We talked of present summer days Kew Gardens, Hampton Court The jewelers where we bought The ring that bound us close
Rick Wakeman joined the band, suddenly the band took on a whole different dimension. Rick was on the front cover of the paper called The Melody Maker, and they billed him as tomorrow's superstar, which is what he became. And we made his first ever television appearance with us on a program called Top of the Pops. And Top of the Pops at the time was the most successful television program in Britain. It had every Thursday 18 million people tuned in to see the show. And they invited us to play on the show. Play on the show. And the song we decided to sing was not a pop song, not a folk song, but a song about Northern Ireland called The Hangman and the Papist.
had Rick in, on the band. We then brought in bass and drums, and we turned much more into a rock band than what we started out as. We started to do long, more involved songs, often with three parts, that turned into almost sweeps. <coughs> it caused a split in the band. Some one part of the band wanted to do short songs, the other part of the band wanted to do the long ones. But this long one is my particular favorite. It's called Blue Angel. <laughs> Best of answers. 
answers need no questions. Yeah. 
Dave and I brought Chaz in back in 1973. And we went off to work straight away in America and Canada. And we spent five years touring around there. We hardly ever went back to England. Never even came to Europe in all that time. But the records were selling very, very well in America. We were in the charts over there. And our most successful album was called Ghosts. And this is the title track, Ghosts. <laughs>
1970s, the band split forever, and we called it a day. It didn't matter, we were all millionaires by then. Dave went out and bought his own village in Austria. Chaz bought his own band. He had Steve Hackett on lead guitar. He could afford it. And I joined the Chippendales. I looked so glamorous in those days. But strange things happen in this world. In the early year, about five years ago, we decided to reform the band and see what it was like to play together again. And it was fantastic. We had a lovely time. There was no pressure anymore. We'd spent all the millions that we had by then. And we made an album called Deja Fu. And a couple of months ago, a DJ in South Africa asked for a copy of it. And he played a song on the radio. And suddenly we find ourselves at number three in the charts in South Africa. It was a song that Dave here wrote called Deja Fu. Oh, Cold Steel. <laughs>
we still go back to America and Canada. In fact, we're going to the USA in September and Canada in October. And it's lovely to go and meet the old friends that we knew. And nowadays we get people coming up to us, couples, husbands and wives, who've been married all that time. And they come up to us and say, we got married to one of your songs. And it's a wonderful feeling to feel that you've made an impression on people that much that they chose to walk down the aisle after their wedding to one of our songs. And it's the song, that's the last part of this song we're going to do for you now, called Autumn.
in another 30 years. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you.
five years. Thank you. Good night, Thank you.